So let's talk about this. Some stories sound fake. I mean, they really sound fake when you, you, you like read them for the first time. Like, this can't be real. This has to be an April Fool's Day joke, right? Uh, and it's like it's part of some Hollywood movie or some sort of script. No, they're actually real. The White House has just announced a brand new governance board called, which is on, underneath the Department of Homeland Security, which is set up to fight misinformation. It's called the Disinformation Governance Board. You can't make this shit up. Literally sounds fake. Yes, it does. Uh, and they've decided to hire someone who is good on camera, someone who has a good Twitter presence, and someone who will tell you when what you are seeing is manipulative, right? So it's almost like a physician heal thyself mm -hmm. type thing. And I have decided the more I think about the use of the term disinformation, the more I realize that it is the new fake news, right? It is the, you don't know for yourself. You're seeing things that we don't like you to see. So what we're going to do is tell you that we need to protect you from disinformation. It's very, um, condescending, I want to say. When someone tells you that's disinformation or uses that term, I feel like it is implying that that you can't think for yourself. And I'm going to turn your head exactly where I want it to be turned. Yeah. Well, the Department of Homeland Security is setting up this new board to counter misinformation related to Homeland Security, and they're going to focus specifically on Russia. <laughs> so this is like, so get this. The Biden administration is going to give you, is going to be on the lookout to make sure that you're protected against disinformation and misinformation. Like the story we just talked about in the maternity ward in Ukraine, which has now been debunked. And the Associated Press ran with that story. Front page, they were the ones to push it, right? The Associated Press. I wonder if the Biden administration in this new disinformation department will step up and slam the Associated Press or any other arm of the Biden administration or uh, or corporate Washington. But we did get a glimpse of this on Wednesday afternoon. DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was testifying before a House panel when he was asked questions about what they were planning to do there. And he said, you know, we oh, yeah, we've already got this under control. Like we are ready. We're we're stepping up. We're going to make sure that this new governance board is underneath the Department of Homeland Security. We've got the money ready to go. We're ready to set this up. So we're going to we're going to crank this puppy out. Um, here was that a little bit of that. Uh, it's a little quiet, so I don't know if we hear the Another audio here. To our homeland is myths and disinformation. You noted that it's a concern of yours at the border with human smuggling organizations peddling misinformation to exploit vulnerable migrants for profit. Can you share what steps you've taken and what future plans you have to address Spanish language myths and disinformation through department wide approach? Um, uh, Congresswoman, we have a number of different offices engaged in this critical effort. Of course, our Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency um, has an entire effort focused on election security right. uh, as part of its mission set. Our Office of Policy, Office of Planning, Policy, and Strategy um, also uh, is a leading effort. Uh, uh, our Undersecretary uh, for Policy, Rob Silvers, is co-chair uh, with our Principal Deputy General Counsel, Jennifer Daskal, in um, leading a just recently constituted uh, misinformation, disinformation governance board. So we're bringing, uh, the goal is to bring the resources of the department together to address this threat. I just read very interesting. Great, so we're gonna bring them all together. So who's gonna head up this new governance board? Well, here she is. This is, she let the cat out of the bag, Nina Jankowitz, right? And by the way, look at her, she's got a Ukrainian flag. Okay. That's her Twitter avatar. Which is fine. We all can stand for people of any ethnicity, right? But sure. this is telling you exactly the narrative that she will be supporting, uh, whether or not the Ukrainian flag represents a military that may be infiltrated by Nazis. She still is willing to support it, right? And so, therefore, she's the one who will be telling us what is true and what is not. Yeah, she says, cat's out of the bag. Here's what I've been up to the past two months and what I've been, and that's why I've been a little quiet on here. Honored to be serving in the Biden administration's Department of Homeland Security and helping shape our counter disinformation efforts. Great. Now, she, so she's the head of this disinformation board. She, we learned, um, has actively advised the Ukrainian government the purveyors of misinformation and disinformation. Yeah, that's right. She was a, she was a, uh, her name is Nina Jankowitz. She was a previously a disinformation Wilson Center um, 
uh, fellow. Fellow, that's right, which advised Ukrainian public policy. So she, <laughs> literally advising the Ukrainian government, the purveyors right now of misinformation and disinformation. Here's, by the way, what she said back in 2020 uh, about the Hunter Biden laptop story. Uh, she has some things to say about this laptop in 2020. Back on the laptop from hell, apparently Biden notes 50 former NATSEC officials and five former CIA heads that believe the laptop is a Russian influence operation. Trump says Russia, Russia, Russia. Now, she has since in the last 24 hours clarified that tweet and said that, well, I was live tweeting. I oh, was, okay. you know, covering basically that story as it unfolded. Um, and so, so the misinformation, she was, she was covering it with misinformation. Right. Live. Yeah. Great, great. So she was live. Are we, so, here's what I can't stand about. Like the reason I, I love like taking your time on a story and allowing the facts to present themselves is that you don't have to rush to get something out. Where, where's the rush? So she's live. She's like, that's my excuse is that I was live. So I was therefore able to spread misinformation. Well, okay. But you're live reporting that someone else is saying, but you're also picking up their narrative and running with it, right? Mm -hmm. Without asking yourself, okay, but is that convenient for that person to say something? Maybe I should qual qualify this if I am in fact live covering it as a reporter. Also, she has retweeted it and said, I was just live tweeting you guys, which I then say, okay, but where is your correction since that story has been validated? Right. Then maybe you can tell us, I, I know that that was not true, right? Now, in her great book, uh, This Is How They Tell Me the World Ends, Nicole Perlwath, who is a New York Times reporter um, and cybersecurity expert, talks about how the United States intelligence has long since been following Russia's efforts to influence Americans through information, right? And when it started in the last uh, in the last election, it really didn't have much to do with misinformation. It had to do with real information and maybe the highlighting thereof. They never said, security had never said, the United States government never said this is misinformation, but it was perversion of information in order to put Hillary Clinton in a negative light. Mm. Um, that absolutely was used, but it never, the, the intelligence never said that it was lies. Hmm. But now they are trying to let us know that what Russia is doing is actually lying to us. So this catchphrase, when you hear it, misinformation, disinformation, I feel like our antennas should go up and we should say, wait, I'm not about to let you tell me what information is true or not. I'm going to think for myself. She tweeted this back in January. Considering the long term damage these lies do to our democracy, I'm dismayed about this decision. She was talking about how Twitter decided that it was going to quit taking action against the lies about the 2020 election anymore. Like that's they're done. Like I know it's been two years, right? I'm dismayed about this decision. I say this about foreign disinformation, and it applies to domestic disinformation, too. Elections aren't an end point. They're an inflection point. Policies need to reflect that. So all for censorship, absolutely. Making sure that uh, what Twitter does is her business and making sure that we are censoring certain Americans. So that's your new, here, here you go. Here's your new head of the uh, Defense Department or the uh, Department of Homeland Security's uh, Disinformation Governance Board. She got her official photo taken, by the way. And do you think that this is part of the budget? Um, her employment is part of this budget you spoke about earlier? Yeah, or? I mean, this is the White House asking for $33 billion today, right? Thirty-three. Oh, no, because she says she's been on this job for two months. So clearly that we were already paying her as taxpayers right. to tell us what's fake news and what's not. Right. So no, this this new independent media piece, these propaganda narratives, that's totally That's different. new. Like, that's new money. That new we're people asking for. just like her. Exactly. Got it. So excited about our new governance board. I love this tweet. It says uh, they have a really funny way of spelling Department of Censorship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, here's another one. Jerry Dunleavy says it best. Uh, if someone claims to be a professional disinformation expert, the chances that they loved the Steele dossier and or baselessly claimed the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation are close to 100%. That they loved it? Yeah. Chances yeah. are that they loved it. And that's exactly what we found out from her, right? Right. I mean, she should be saying that the, that tweet 
was prime example of disinformation. So I am showing you what not to do. Right. And then we'd all be like, oh, okay, great. Right. She's like, yeah. I fell for it. <laughs> right. And I, I kind of feel like I, I expect more out of my ministry of truth, or I guess they're not going to call it that, but you know, the ministry we, of we truth, all know yeah. what it is. We all read the book. Um, I would expect them to at least have their disinformation, like that they didn't have to go back and change it, you know? But right. what, yeah. what, what, what is interesting to me about this, though, is so it, like if, if they're going to tech companies and having tech companies like censor people on behalf of the government, that's still not a breach of the First Amendment. It sucks, but it's not a breach of the First Amendment. But if the government themselves start censoring information, how is that not a very clear violation of freedom of speech? Because that is that is retribution by the government which is yes. exactly what the, that, uh, the First Amendment is about. Yeah, and in many ways, you know, you could argue that the, uh, the, the FCC already does that anyway, right? I mean, they, they tell you what you can and cannot say on broadcast television. Yes. Yeah, the, you will get a fine if you, are, if you say certain things on Facebook. But Fed, broadcast networks are supposed to give equal time to both sides of a political spectrum. The problem is during war, we don't have two sides. We only have one side, which is go to war, right? And so if this were an election, then they were, then they are supposed to give equal airtime to, say, the Democratic and Republican candidate. But uh, isn't that hilarious, too? They don't even, like, make, oh, make real space for any third-party candidates. It's Republican, Democrat. Forget, you know, in the United States, we cannot allow, because these corporate parties, both Republicans and Democrats, run the show, and they are both corrupt. And they are a part of one corrupt system. We can't even allow a third party voice in this right. to give them equal airtime. But it's of it's interesting to, to think that there, I mean, information has always been weaponized since the dawn of time, since there were political parties, since there was motivation to do it. So, but it was always left up to the policy of truth, right? To the open spectrum of information for the truth to come out but we are no longer trusted with it in the internet age it's no so we are told it's inf misinformation only if it's a narrative that powerful people don't like thank you so much for subscribing to our channel you know we've been banned we've been blocked we've been censored that's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free that's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.